I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna end infinite potential today. Why? I don't know. I just never asked for it. So I'm gonna just end it today. I have another what if coming up. So yeah, um this question involves the what if that's coming up. Well some in some aspects. Not fully, but in some aspects nonetheless. So I want you to tell me who do you think the most skilled swordsman in anime is? Alright, I have my own opinion, and it's not Zoro, Kirito, or anything like that. Not the ones we know. It's probably one of the most slept-on anime characters. So, yeah, if, if, you, if you can figure out who it is, alright then. So, basically, you know, Deku, he saved Summer and shit like that. Came back, saved Summer, you know. Beat the living crap out of the League of Villains, letting Shigaraki and friends leave. Like the main villains, Shigaraki and, well, Korogiri. You know. He picked up his girl, he went home because he saw how she was acting. How, you know, she needed a little sign sign. So I won't be saying what that sign sign is because, like, we already knew what happened in the first part or second part. I don't know how much parts I made to this. Like, I, I think I started this a whole month and I go a whole month ago and I started and I stopped. So basically, so you know, Deku let that happen. But Deku, you know, after doing it with her, after they got it on, and she's like asleep, she's sound asleep. Deku's pissed now. He's pissed. It's not that he's like horny, horny. No, it's not why he's pissed. It's because they put Summer's life in danger. So he's severely pissed. So, you know, he pulls up to the League of Villains hideout, right? He pulls up to the League of Villains hideout and he starts fucking shit up. He legitimately starts beating the living crap out of villains left and right. Doesn't matter who it is, he's beating the living crap out of you. And it's basically, he, he's not beating them to the point where, oh, they need to go to the hospital. No, he's beating them to the point where they might as well, they, they, they should be dead. Like, they should be dead right now. And Deku has killed a significant amount of them. It's just that, well, Deku's not paying attention. So Deku, after he's done with that, he's over here going to beat the living crap out of Shigaraki, but Kurogiri sent him to Shigaraki. And you know, Shigaraki escaped, but Kurogiri, he didn't have a chance because Deku grabbed that collar of his and didn't just close it. No, he smashed it on his neck killing him killing Oboro not giving a damn who it is just killing him as Deku he decides to leave all finger all his hand is just blood red just a really dark pitch color of dark red because you know his hands just dripping blood and shit like that blood all over his face all over his clothes you know Deku is not trying to let Summer see this because well she's probably gonna ask what happened so Deku immediately Immediately in front of the door, snaps his finger, clean. So he goes inside, hangs out with Summer. But later that night, you know, Summer hears a knock on the door. Deku, he's downstairs training and shit like that. He doesn't really need training, he's just training because he wants to. And it's basically, they open the door as Summer sees, well, none other than the UA teachers. Well, at least the ones we actually care about, such as, you know, Midnight, All Might, Mike, um, Aizawa and shit like that and also pro heroes miracle endeavor ryuku and shit like that and it's basically she opens the door as basically immediately she's bombarded they all barge into the door as basically all might's over here saying where is that boy that was with you as basically she says what where what do you mean what do you want with izuku as she said as basically nezu comes in and says Young Summer, I see. it seems you're not aware of what happened. You should possibly call your boyfriend or... As Summer says, we've been engaged for a month now, I think. Yeah. As Nazu says, ah, oh, alright then. As basically, Deku, you know. He's coming up. He's just coming up now. He was just training, you know, shirt off. As basically... He comes up to immediately, um, get, well, kicked, or supposedly kicked by Miriko. But Miriko, the moment she looks at her legs, she was whole smirking, prideful, and shit like that, but the moment she looked at her leg, she saw that that leg wasn't even touching Izuku. And the worst part is, her leg is broken now. As she says, what, what did you do? As Izuku looked at her and said, care to explain to me why I just got out of working out and I'm getting kicked in the side of the face? As All Might says, Young Izuku Midoriya, you are under arrest. As Summer says, why? As Aizawa 
pulls out pictures and says, this is why. As Summer, she's about to grab the pictures, but Deku appears right in front of Aizawa, snatching the pictures and saying, if you ever show her those pictures, I'll kill you. As Summer, for the first time, she's actually seen, she has seen the side of Izuku that Izuku didn't want to see. It doesn't frighten her or anything, but she's just worried. As Aizawa says, why would you do it? As... As basically, Izuku knows. Izuku says, you know damn well why the hell I did it. Hold on. As Aizawa says, you do have a point, but you didn't have to take it that far. Not only that, you killed a former pro hero. As Deku says, like hell, I killed a former pro hero. As basically. All Might says you killed a hero called Obero as yeah I don't know his hero name I'm sorry but shit as basically Zuku says and who the hell is that as basically Aizawa says it's the guy with the blue hair as Deku says oh him that purple smoke guy as he said what do you mean purple smoke as he says oh you didn't know that warp gay guy was your friend as he says, what? As Izuku then states, it doesn't matter. It's not like he was alive anyways. It's just his dead body reanimated. As Aizawa is even more shocked by this, and he's now angered by this, hearing that his friend was reanimated. He couldn't even rest in peace. As basically, he said, who did this? As they hear a laugh from the outside. As all for one, Shigaraki barges in as all for one. With a whole bunch of nomus behind him says, <laughs> Finally, I can get rid of these annoying pests that have been bothering me for years. As Deku says, Right on time, I was gonna come look for you. As he snaps his fingers, as all of the nomus go extinct. As all for once says, What? Impossible. There's more than a hundred thousand nomus here. As Deku appears right in front of him. And he's slightly taller than All For One by at least three to four inches as he looks All For One right in the eyes. All For One confused how Mizuku gets to look him right in the eyes because All For One for one has no eyes. But that's when he realizes that Deku, just being in his mere presence, gave him eyesight and fixed his face. As he's about to cry but then he remembers he's in front of somebody that can potentially kill him. As basically Deku looks him straight in the eyes, bloodshot eyes as, well, eyes of a vampire, the red bloody eyes of a vampire, as he says, you know, you have nerve coming over here, thinking you were going to do anything, as Shigaraki touched Izuku thinking that it was going to decay him, says, ha, we won, as Shigaraki gets his head grabbed, as he Shigaraki says, what? How? Impossible. As Deku says, I'm a mortal, you retard. As he smashes Shigaraki's head, instantly killing him. As he grabs all for one and pulls his hand. He's, he's grabbing him by the neck. Well, not by his neck, but by his throat. And pulling his um, hand. Taking out his throat. So, yeah. They're dead. It's basically all for one is dead. Not even in jail, just dead. As All Might's thinking, oh, this is well a catastrophe and shit like that. He has to get rid of him and shit like that. As basically, you know. All Might tries to attack him with the other heroes, but Deku, you know. Another massacre. Not bloody one, not one to actually kill them, but still a massacre that'll leave them in the hospital for at least a few months. They're bloodied, yeah, but still. As basically, Nezu called for backup and, well, heroes from the top 1000 just pulled out to this one big-ass house. As Deku proceeds to start the one-way massacre, as he starts beating the living crap out of all of them. All of them without hesitation. As... As Nezu's thinking he needs reinforcements, so he's calling every hero. As Nezu, he seems that it's gotten so severe that he legitimately had to publicly announce that Off One has been killed, and whoever can kill Izuku gets a whole lot of money. 
And the villains, seeing this, are like, that can... It's enough to last them a whole life, the rest of their life, as he's, as they think they can finally change their lives around. So, you know, they pull up. So Deku, you know, villains from many other countries, America, Russia, shit like that, just pull up. All right. As even the armies pull up, as Deku, pissed, severely angered by this. He's not aiming to kill anyone, but he, he, he leaves them severely weakened. Like the whole planet itself is severely weakened. He beats the living crap out of every last one of them. Summer just bears witness to Izuku beating the living crap out of them. She's not scared at all because she's not seeing him kill them. She's seeing him restraining himself. Not a little bit. It's more than they think. The fact that he's even restraining himself to the point that they don't die is just a miracle in its own way for them. As basically, she sees this as basically Deku after beating up almost everyone in every country he goes to summer kisses her and says i'll have to go i don't know when i'll see you again but bye as deku he the moment he did that he made her immortal as he dipped he didn't even dip outside of well the solar system no he dipped out of existence he legitimately dipped out of existence. And the moment he did that, he dipped out of everything. Like, everything. Like, he left, like, he dipped out of everything. And this is gonna be, like, my only. No. My first. Oof. Not only I meant first. This is gonna be my first Deku. If you don't remember what Summer looks like, this is Summer. This is my first Deku that actually survives out of out of getting out of everything so yeah it's basically deku he dips as summer she's just left there crying nezu severely traumatized as summer doesn't know why but she feels that she'll see him again but not sooner than she thinks probably in the near distant probably million years in the future but she's scared as basically deku the moment after leaving everything he dies. He dies because, well, you can't really exist out of everything. Unless you're nothing. So, yeah. But, there's going to be a what if based on that, and that's the next what if. It's basically, Deku. He dies. Deku dies, but... Everything sees this, but she doesn't know what to do. Because... If she does do something, it could possibly, well, cause a catastrophe in its own. So she decides to let it be. And for the next few quintillion years outside of everything, among the few undecillion years outside of everything, and it's just that the time flows differently. So time is much faster outside of everything than inside of everything because in outside of everything there is no laws of time nor space so basically it's just eternities passing by so basically over time izuku's body starts reforming as deku's body reforms and now it deku he's fully reformed seeing as this is a thing he's finally well become more than infinity He's transcended that which cannot be transcended, which Deku feels as, well, more than just an achievement. And you may be wondering, hmm, how strong is he? Well, I'm be honest with you, just this Deku alone can clap Buddha and Wukong. Like, they solo Wukong and Buddha. Why? Because, well, Buddha and Wukong can't live outside of everything. Well, Wukong can, but not for long. Why? Because, well, he only has 72 chances, and every time he dies, he gets reincarnated or reborn. So, he won't really have long. Probably 72 seconds. Shit, yeah, 72 seconds, that's all he got. A minute and 12 seconds. Buddha is immediately gonna die. You may be wondering, but don't they have a Nirvana? Nirvana just makes you the strongest nigga inside of, the ho inside of ever existence. See, you need to understand, they control, they have existence inside of their palm, but they're also a part of existence, which means even though they have everything that they could ever want, have, need, shit like that, they have everything in their hand. 
everything as an existence, every form of existence, anything that you could think of is in their hands. But they're inside of everything. So they haven't transcended their own selves yet. So they can't really live outside of everything. So Deku, he does that. As you know. Now, in the My Hero verse, Deku thought that at least a few years had passed, but at least a few hundred thousand years have passed. But in reality, it hasn't even been 100 years that has passed. So Summer is still alive. The amount of time that just survived, that just passed is just, well, 11 years. As Deku, he goes back and, well, Deku just watches from above. He doesn't want to see doesn't want to make contact with Orion because he thinks that everybody still remembers him. Deku's still looking the same, but his hair is slightly longer. Instead of it being, well, to his buttocks and now, it's at least down to his feet. So, Deku, he just looks. It's basically, that's when Deku hears a voice that says Izuku. As, basically, he looks to his, well, right to see none other than Summer, yay, as Izuku says, uh, Summer, as Summer immediately runs to him, starts crying and shit like that, hugging him, and yeah, as basically, Izuku says, uh, I thought the world would progress ever since I left, as she says it has, but it's only been 11 years, as Deku says, hmm. as basically, Summer says, well, come with me, as basically, you know, Summer takes Deku back home, she cooks for him and stuff like that, and, well, she told him about what has happened in the past 11 years. Since Izuku has no knowledge of what happened in anything in the past 11 years, so Deku decides that he should call off the other, call on the other constellations to tell him how shit has been inside of existence, as, you know, he calls them up as they're surprised because they haven't gotten a call from, well, Izuku in 11 years, so they're surprised as hell, but they pick up nonetheless, as... Deku asks a question as they answer. As basically, that's when Summer gets a call, and it's basically UA talking about, oh, to have a reunion, a great reunion for everyone in Class 1A and shit like that. As Deku says, mm. as basically, Summer says, do you want to go? As Izuku says, fine. As basically, not that night, but the next day, the next night. Deku's not really wearing a suit. Deku's not... De 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 Deku don't really care about looking good. If he feels comfortable, he's gonna fucking wear what he wants to wear. So, you know. He goes, and everybody's shocked when they see Zuku. As Nezu, Nezu traumatizes, what are you doing here? As Deku says, I'm here with my wife. Mind your business, as... Basically, throughout the night, shit's been going smoothly. Until Bakugo came up, threatening Deku, saying, Oh, you're a fucking villain and shit like that. Trying to attack Deku to bring him into custody, but you know, Deku not having his slaps living crap out of Bakugo, sending him flying, knocking him out. And that's the end of the party. Why? Because, well, Deku happened to, well... <sighs> slap Bakugo into the control panels, kind of messing it up a little bit. But hey, such is life. As basically, party cancelled, they said they'll do it another day. Momo says, no, they could do it at her house. So, you know, they pull up to Momo's house. Party's going all swell and ends and shit like that. Until, boom, an explosion happens. Oh, they look to the door to see Bakugo, furious, enraged. She charges towards Deku. Deku, you know, knowing that this is Momo's house and he had somewhat of a relatively good relationship in her pa in the past. Even though it wasn't for long, at least like a day or two, but still, he saw that she was a nice person and not a fucked up person like others. Says, alright, I guess I'll end it. Slaps Bakugo to the ground. As basically Bakugo is knocked out, as Deku picks Bakugo up, and he throws him. Straight to his house. Well, at least the house that he remembers, which is, well, his mom and dad still live there. As basically, Deku, he does that. And, yeah, all's well and ends well for the party. As basically, as basically, Momo says, you mentioned earlier that she's your wife, right? As Deku says, oh, right, we're only engaged right now, we haven't gotten married yet. As Momo says, would you like some help planning? As Izuku says, sure, why not? Mmm, not her like a bitch. Alright, then, I don't hurt no more. As basically, Deku, why am I working? 
So basically, Deku, he says, all right. So, you know, they got that over with. And yeah, so a few months later, they got married, broadcasted through, well, every part of existence. So everybody saw it and shit like that. And that's how it ends. They had two beautiful, lovely children. I won't think of names because they won't be in the future. So, yeah. And yeah, that's the end of Infinite Potential Deku. Yay! <sighs> now to get on to the next what if.